I feel like this one thing, if you do it, and you do it consistently, will bring your hunts to the next level more than anything else. What's up everyone? Clayton here, Catch you Outdoors. Welcome to the video. And today I'm out here doing some archery practice. Archery season here in California is just a few weeks away. And so, gotta keep the skills up. And while I'm here, I thought I'd stop and shoot this video. I've been wanting to do this for a little while. I wanna share with you some practical tips for archery hunting, and I think it applies to rifle hunting um, for deer, even elk, bear, whatever you're doing. These are just practical kind of basic tips, but I really feel like if you employ them, they're gonna make your hunts more successful. So let's get into it. Now usually in these videos, you save the best for last, but what I feel like is one of the best tips that I can give you, if you're not already doing it, I'm gonna give you first. I feel like this one thing, if you do it, and you do it consistently, will bring your hunts to the next level more than anything else. You ready for it? Here it is. When you're walking through the woods, keep your head up. That's it, it's that simple. Keep your head up. You might be thinking, seriously, that's your big tip? Seriously, it will make the biggest difference in your hunt if you can always keep your head up when you're moving. And if you have to look down because you've got uneven terrain, loose rocks or whatever, look down first, see where your next step is gonna go, and then put your head back up before you take that step. Always be looking ahead. And the reason I can tell you that's so important is because I've made the rookie mistake of keeping my head down, you get tired, you've hiked a lot, you're just exhausted, and what happens is your head just naturally falls and you start looking at the path in front of you instead of scanning the horizon, scanning far to mid to near. So it's easy to do when you're tired. When you're done watching this video and liking and subscribing, go outside and put yourself to the test. Take a walk around your neighborhood and see if you naturally look down at the path in front of you or if you're constantly scanning the horizon. If you can get through a one, two, three, four mile walk without looking down virtually at all and constantly scanning, if you can get in that habit, your hunts will become more successful, I promise you. Hunters who can consistently scan the horizon in front of them they're gonna see animals more often than not before the animal sees them. And that is the key to becoming a successful hunter. Seeing animals before they see you. All right, so next tip I'm gonna give you is utilize still hunting. Now, if you're new to hunting and you, you don't know what I'm talking about, Still hunting is not standing still, it's actually walking through the woods. So actively looking for game while you're on the move, instead of just sitting in one spot. So there's a huge difference between walking and still hunting. When you're still hunting, you have a lot of considerations. Number one is the wind. You have to play the wind. You will never fool an animal's nose. Elk, deer, bear, it doesn't matter. You're never gonna fool their nose. So you have to play the wind. So the thermals, prevailing wind, whatever it is, make sure that wind is in your face when you're moving. If that wind is at your back and it's blowing out in front of you, quit. Go somewhere else, hike a different pattern, whatever. Get out, because you're never gonna fool an animal when it comes to wind. Always play the wind. What I like to do is spend my mornings glassing, because your thermals, usually you have the cooler air in the morning, and your thermals are going downhill, so you don't wanna be pushing downhill because the wind's just coming right off your back, flowing downhill, and it's gonna blow out anything in front of you. So what I like to do is glass in the morning, and then when the wind switches, I'll still hunt, and I'll still hunt going down, or side hilling. That way that wind is coming in my face, or at the worst, kinda of coming across me going uphill. So I want that wind in my face all the time. That's the key to still hunting, the biggest key. Uh, second is noise. So you don't want to make a lot of noise. Uh, what I like to do, uh, first of all, you move slow. I mean, 
painfully slow. If you think you're going slow, cut it in half. That's what I'm talking about. Spend all day going a mile. Now, there's a caveat to that, and that is if you are hiking a ridge and you're going really slow and you're still hunting and there's no animals around, it's pointless. So you have to know that animals are there. So that's the key. But if you know animals are there, you've done the homework, you've done the scouting or whatever, or you've seen them from a distance, move super slow. So the key to still hunting is seeing an animal before it sees you, just like we talked about with keeping your head up. Obviously you wanna keep your head up when you're doing this. Move slow, play the wind, and if you can, minimize your noise using tools like uh, walking moccasins. I like to use uh, covers that go over my boot and they have a f about a one inch foam pad underneath. So instead of my hard rubber boot sole hitting the ground, crunching sticks, it's a foam pad. It cuts down noise dramatically. Um, the brand I like is Sneak Tech. So this is what they look like right here. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of the video down below if you want to check them out. We're not affiliated with them in any way, they just have a great product. So I want to tell you guys about it. But those are the three keys for still hunting successfully. Play the wind, move slow, minimize your noise. Well, I'm out here trying to shoot my bow. And between me and my target... Yeah. You guys gonna move? Who wants to be dinner? Hey dude, you gotta move. Still hunting ties into my next tip, which is you have to know that animals are, are in the area that you're hunting. And how do you know that? So the way you know, the way I like to know that animals are in the area that I'm hunting is I like to find beds and I like to find consistent droppings. Not tracks, not a little bit of droppings, but beds and consistent droppings. What do I mean by consistent droppings? Well, one pile of deer droppings is not consistent. A deer could have walked through last week, left his excrement on the ground, and moved on for f four miles, and you think that deer is there, that deer is four miles away. That could happen. So the way I like to know the animals are there, are present in the area. So when I'm looking for beds and I'm looking for droppings, I'm looking for fresh beds and fresh droppings and a lot of droppings. When you see a lot of droppings in a, in a small, in a given area, that tells you that the deer are either staying there for a long period of time or moving really slow through that area, which if they're moving slow, that means they're feeding. So. When deer want to get somewhere, they get somewhere and they get there quick. So if they're moving really slow across a landscape, it's usually because they're feeding. And that's a good sign. You want to know where they're feeding. And when they're bedding, the way to know that a bed is fresh, it's kind of oval shaped and it'll be pawed out, clawed out. I don't know, they have hooves, so hooved out. But deer will scrape it. They'll scrape the beds, clean it out of rocks, sticks. They, they want a comfortable bed. So. A bed, you know a bed is fresh if there's nothing in it. So a, a really fresh bed might even have some hair still in the bed. Um, but that doesn't usually last long because the first wind will blow it out. So if you see hair, it's really fresh. Um, but if, if the bed is clean, you know it's relatively fresh, maybe a day or two old. Because the wind will come in and drop pine needles, blow sticks, leaves, whatever, into the bed. Um, so if it's clean, it's fresh. And of course with droppings, here's a picture of old droppings. So you see it, they're like white, gray, crusty. And here's a picture of fresh droppings. They're shiny, they're wet looking, they're dark. Um, and then you kind of have the color scale in between. So you want a lot of droppings in one area and you want beds. So if you know, so that's how I like to know that deer are in the area I'm hunting. If I see that sign, I know I can slow down, even though I, I might not have even seen an animal, but I know I can slow down and hunt that area and I have a really good chance of running into animals. So <clears throat> we had some requests to talk about hot weather and how to prepare for hot weather hunts. And a lot of it's just common sense, but I'm gonna throw a couple tips that, that we like to use into this video. Like I said, it's, it's common sense. So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Like start hydrating the night before. Um, 
I like to use stuff like this right here, this Mountain Ops. Um, I just mix it in with my water. It's got all the electrolytes and I'll drink that consistently. Keep my body hydrated um, and don't get sunburn. If you let your body get sunburn, blood will rush to the skin because it's been injured and it's trying to heal. So you have this kind of compound effect of heat. So your skin is hot from the burn and blood rushing to the area and so you feel even hotter. Um, so you don't want to get sunburned. Use sunscreen. So I have this stuff right here. It's, it's like a little deodorant stick. Um, I can just rub it on my face, exposed skin, I'm good to go. It's easy, it's light. And uh, keeps me from getting sunburned. Use like SPF clothing. Uh, Kuyu has a great line, this stuff right here, the Gila line. Uh, but there's a lot of other brands that make it too. Cover up your skin, don't get burned. Um, hike at night too. Take advantage of the cooler temperatures at night. If you are glassing in the morning and then trying to hike in the middle of the day because you think animals are bedded and it's a good chance to move, no. Don't do it. Uh, you're going to get dehydrated, you're going to get sunburned, you could get heat stroke. And I've, I had heat stroke a few years ago. I never want to do that again. It was terrible. So be cautious, cover your skin, hydrate, be careful. And if it's too hot, hunt the morning and get out. It's not worth it. It's not worth your life. You got to be careful. All right. The last tip I want to leave you with today is if you happen to have, if you're lucky enough to have a summer storm move through your hunting area, whether it's archery season or even rifle season, if you have a storm move through the area, don't hold up in your tent or go home because it's wet. Hang tight as soon as that storm rolls out, get out there and hunt. I promise you, you're going to see so much more action in the woods after a good summer storm. And it's a lot of fun hunting after a storm because everything's wet and it's quiet. So you can walk through the woods pretty quietly and animals become so much more active right after a storm. They'll usually hunker down while the rain's coming and it's really windy and all that. But as soon as that storm rolls out, they're going to get out and start feeding. The frisky. It's a lot of fun being in the woods after a storm. So take advantage of those opportunities. All right, folks, that's it for the video. Those are my tips. I really hope this helps. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, like, subscribe. We, we really appreciate the support. And uh, we got a lot of fun hunts coming up this year. And we'll have some cool videos coming your way. So stay tuned, and we'll see you on the next one.